Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video we are going to see about one of the most asked or most frequently asked question which is what is continuous integration. So I'll take you through the steps of continuous integration along with some examples as well. So before we move on to this video, this is me, Asan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to Little Slaw YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Like the video, share the video with your friends who is uh, applying for interviews and who is looking for better opportunities. And now with for no further ado, let's go to the video. So firstly, let's see what is continuous integration. So continuous integration is a software development practice that enables the developers to integrate their code changes into a shared repository frequently. That's the keyword, shared repository frequently. And let me go take you through the steps each and every step so the first step here is developers work locally yes so developers work on their code locally on their development missions which is their own or their personal missions so they make changes and improvements to the code base as needed to implement for any features or any fixes or any bugs or they also enhance the existing functionality so that's the very first step which is the developers work locally and then when it comes to the second step, which is pushing changes to version control. So once developers are satisfied with their changes and ready to integrate them into the main code base, they push their code to a version control system. For example, it can be a Git or it can be Azure DevOps. So it can be any version control. So that's the second step, which is once the developers are satisfied with their changes and it, the code is ready to integrate into the code base, the developer push their code to a version control system such as Git. And for example, a developer might commit and push their changes to a feature branch in a Git repository. And then the third step, which is automated build process, which is triggered by the continuous integration server. So upon pushing the changes to the virtual uh, to the version control system, the CI server, for example, uh, it can be a Jenkins, it can be Travis CI, it can be Circle CI, it can be any CI server, continuous integration server. It detects the new code through web hooks or any polling mechanisms. So then the CI server triggers an automated build process for the project associated with the newly pushed code. So that's the third step. So once you push your changes to the version control, the CI server takes care of it. It detects for any new code through the web hooks. So if it has been configured, it checks for any new code or any polling mechanisms. And then the CA server triggers an automated process, automated build process for the project associated with the newly pushed code. And then the fourth step, which is build process execution. So previously, uh, the developer develops the code, he pushes the changes into version control and the CI server looks for a, any new code. And then the fourth step, which is the build process execution. So the CI server pulls the latest code from the repository, including the changes pushed by the developers. It then initiates the build process, which typically involves compiling the code and it runs automated tests and perform other necessary checks. For example, the CI server might execute unit test integration test, static code, uh, sorry, static code analysis for any code coverage analysis and for any other quality checks which are part of the build process. So all these has to be done when the build process execution is happening, right? So the last step of it, which is the immediate feedback on the system. So on the build status. So if any issues are detected during the build process, such as failing tests, compilation errors, or any violations of coding standards, the CA server notifies the developers immediately through the results. So notification can be sent via any email or any messaging platforms or integrated directly into the development tools like IDE. So the developers will get the feedback immediately on the build status. So developers receive the status of their real build in real time which allows them to address any problems promptly. So that is how the continuous integration works. And let me take you through an example. So this will definitely give you an idea on how does it work. And in fact, you can use this example in your interviews when the 
interviewer asks you. So suppose a team of developers is working on a web application hosted on GitHub and each developer works on a feature branch locally and pushes their changes to the corresponding branch on the GitHub repository. And when a developer pushes their changes, GitHub triggers a webhook that notifies the Jenkins CI server about the new code. Jenkins then pulls the latest code from the repository, compiles the code, runs unit tests and perform other checks. If all checks pass unsuccessfully, Jenkins reports a successful build and if there are any issues, Jenkins notifies the developers providing immediate feedback on the build status. And finally, the developers will review the feedback, fix the issues and push new changes which, which trigger another CI build cycle and this is again a continuous process until the moment the issues are merged to the main. So overall, the CI, the continuous integration helps maintain code quality which will reduce integration problems and accelerate the development process by providing early detection of issues and rapid feedback to developers. So with that, I come to an end and I believe this video would be very useful to you. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Ashish Shanmugam and Little Slaw.